Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for the Making Progress channel. And today's topic is about the insane implications of aging reversal therapy. Ooh, this one's a juicy one, folks. This is video number 10. Please go back and watch the other nine videos if you're interested in this sort of thing. And this is for the series in this channel. We'll do a bunch of different series and every other video is a different one. This is from preparing for the future. So today we will talk about a few things. First, what is aging reversal? Is it even realistic? Sounds like fantasy to me. The potential effects it may have on industry and society. What will happen between now and then to when it's possible? And lastly, how can you prepare for this yourself. So uh, caveat here today, and there's always the caveat that I may not have any idea what I'm talking about, but the caveat here is this is one of my most speculative videos because the fruits of artificial general intelligence, which seems to be on a one hell of a trajectory recently, may make all of this pointless brain-machine interface and then brain uploading may allow us to live, all of us, in kind of virtual worlds sooner than we even have the opportunity to really develop anti-aging tech. But I think that still, at least in some regards, it's very possible that it could happen. The thing uh, I will say is, and I think I'm going to say this again later, the how this is going to affect society stuff is really, really tentative because I necessarily have to take the view of society ish sort of what it's like today and then apply a lens of, but in the 2030s when age reversal is real, how will it affect society? But I'm pretending the society then looks like it does today, but with aging reversal. And the thing is, it's going to be so different in so many other ways that, that it just may not map very well. Um, but just kind of a cool thing, a uh, little bit of fantasizing together with you guys today, just to see like, what kind of wacky stuff could happen if age reversal was really a thing, right? So to that end, let's kick it. Aging is a biological process which roughly is composed of two elements. The first element is aging occurs because of degradation due to entropy, like just stuff gets, your body gets dirty internally for lack of a better word, uh, hairs going gray, via melanocyte damage due to oxidative stress is a good example. It's just like stuff adds up and then it's not as good as it used to be. The same way your car ages. And the other component is what is called pre-programmed senescence is when uh, Basically, there's better ways to say this. Pre-program senescence is just one aspect of a general cluster of ideas about the fact that your body has the systems to really curb aging a ton, and I'll demonstrate how we know this later, but at some age and at older and older ages, it just stops really using these systems. It lets them like it lets lets them tail off and then your aging accelerates because your body's like, ah, what am I even doing here? What am I saving? There's a good reason for that that I'll get into is, is biological and evolutionary, but there's kind of this thing that aging is something that happens to you. And this other thing that like your body really just kind of lets it happen and it could not let it happen. And the huge recent insight that we've had from research in just the past four or five years, really the past two or three is that when you're younger, your body has various systems tuned on and up for fixing almost all of the entropic damage that you are going to get, uh, including it cleans up your genome for accidental methylation events and all this other stuff. But as you get older, these systems that essentially keep you young start to begin to begin to underfunction significantly. And it's not just because these systems are degraded. It is because your body just stops giving a crap biologically because sexually reproducing animals like us are designed to be temporary reshufflings of genes that are necessarily sort of by design replaced by the next generation and then th there's another reshuffling, next gen, another reshuffling, next gen. And then 
your your body. So there's a term for this in industry, which is highly misused by ideological people called planned obsolescence. It's like uh, at some point, you know, they did not design your iPhone to live forever. They actually only designed it to work for maybe four or five years. And there's components in there that they could have built just a little bit differently and they would have lasted 10 times longer, but they were like, why? You're just going to throw your iPhone away in four years anyway because it'll be outdated technologically. So why would we put in extra work in order to have this go further? To put this in perspective, uh, there are living systems that do not age and do not die. Bacteria you just keep splitting in half. And the split in half this part and the split in half this part are essentially identical or very close. And they don't have really crazy damage. Now, some of them can get damaged. They don't have a good ability to heal. But some living systems can pers just persist for a very long time, still heal, still remain, uh, have most of their, all their vital functions. They just don't die and they don't really age much. And aging is definitely a thing that is different in all the animals. It's not like this getting older and being alive to be older, some kind of mega accomplishment only humans can do. There are a variety of animals, some kinds of turtles that live way, way, way longer than us and like age 100, you poke it, it's still fine. And so something there is like, well, its body systems are still keeping it alive and well for a real long time. Why? Why are they doing this and why did ours shut off? And the real reason is probably to do with kind of the, the evolution of how sex occurs and Basically, our genes think that like once we get to like age 30 or so in a normal environment, they just stop caring to keep us being our best because most of us have already reproduced and just like died off from natural causes. Like that's the majority of how our evolution occurred. So when you're asking the question of how come after age 30, our body just kind of lets it, lets things go? It's just no idea why the hell it's alive anymore in some sense because it's like, well, I was supposed to be dead already, and I have kids of my own. They're already good. So you think humans in the wild start reproducing charitably. This is pretty late at age 15. So by the time you are 30 years old, you, you, got, you got a whole generation of kids that you pumped out alive and well, running around. And then you at least replaced your DNA. You know, each two kids replace your genes. And then you're, you're, you're kind of good. And that's just not worthwhile for that system to keep you alive much longer because it would take a lot of matter and energy to fix you up and heal you like it does during the time when you're alive. But once once you are, because uh, there's a, a couple of hypotheses why sexual evolution is a real big deal. One of them is like for uh, preventing communicable diseases and, and other pathogens from taking hold. When you change your genetics, it kind of throws them off. You stick around for long enough and things will figure out how to kill you and you're going to die anyway. So the body's like, or the genes that construct us are like, eh, like, why are we even keeping you around, right? You're like an old iPhone by the time that you're 30, uh, evolutionarily speaking. And it's like, eh, like, why should we continue to <laughs> fiddle with this? There's already copies of, because remember genes, evolution is gene centric, not individual centric. So your genes are now in you and they're in four of your surviving children and then two of their already surviving grandchildren by the time you're 30, typically in ancestral societies. So they're kind of like, oh, there's a whole lot of us alive here. And that guy's been around for a long time. Typically, if there were genes earlier that evolved to really make you quite robust at age 30, you would just like break a leg when you were 32, it'd heal weird and then you just limp around and you're no good. And there's younger people with better legs and they eat more food and you starve to death and you die. And thus the genes that promulgate you living longer in the real nasty, nasty environment in which we evolved, it just like made you live too long for your own good and you would just break and be a malfunctioning thing and then you wouldn't have any ability to help any of the other genes out. You may actually be sagging the system down with your dilapidated presence. And it's just kind of like, why do, if we could just re reboot this whole system every time and teach culturally to younger people from older people and pass that culture down, maybe there's just no good reason to have a lot of older people around. Now, here's the thing. We don't live in that system anymore. And nowadays, when you're 51 years old, you are at your most productive by a long shot for society. So the game has changed, but you're biologically, your body's still like, oh, I'm 51. It's time to start smoking, smoking a cigarette here. I don't know what the hell is going on. Why the hell am I still around? It's like, hey, like, dude, your, your sirtuins aren't in production anymore. You're not revitalizing your body like you used to be. And I was like, what the hell's the point? I'm supposed to be retired. And so there may need to be a readjustment, and that's where aging reversal comes in.
So another huge recent insight is that these underfunctioning systems, which are active in younger people, but more and more inactive in older people, they allow entropic aging to occur because they're essentially like they used to block you from entropic aging and then fix stuff and then block, block, block. But they just put their hands down. They're just getting punched by entropy and not fixing anything. And you're like, get back to work. And they're like, I'm, I checked out 30 years ago, bro. Why the hell am I still here? So if we find out how to turn those systems back up, back on in some cases and up in others in which they've declined, we can potentially let the body de-age itself, healing entropic damage, and continue to keep you looking and feeling and performing young. And to illustrate the point that aging is something our bodies allow to happen to us in a very different way than just normal entropic damage, you can ask yourself the question, how much do you degrade in your abilities and structures and appearance between age 15 and 25 years old? You, you kind of don't. You just, just get better at stuff that entire time. But you, you don't look at a 15-year-old. You know, aliens examine their biology like, oh, let me see, look, look at this, look at that, look, look, open your eyes. I mean, they look at a 25-year-old and there's just not many instances in which they're going to be like, this is a person who has really just seen the ravages of aging at age 25. That's not how it is. A 25-year-old is young in almost every respect because those anti-aging subsystems are still there working and doing their, their best to fix the damage. Not their best anymore, but really, really, really good. And they're turning down and off not because aging is degrading them, in some sense, yes, but also because they just kind of stop doing their thing. Many other things do that. Growth hormone production declines, testosterone production declines, estrogen production declines with age. And it's not that there's something wrong with your systems. It's because they just, they just were not engineered to continue to keep up these levels because you're not supposed to be alive much longer. And now you are because thanks Western medicine, and food production and safety, we can just uh, be around into our 80s. So... A potential goal of aging reversal therapy is to get you to produce these aging, age reversing molecules again, or get these genes turned back on, reverse you back into something like your 20s, and keep you there kind of sort of indefinitely. Now, you still take entropic damage. There will still be an opportunity for other medical therapies to help heal that and fix that and stuff like that. But at least you stay young long enough to catch the next big wave of biomedical advances. That'll catch you at least another 10 years of being youthful, which is a very, very, very big deal. Now, when I first heard this anti-aging age reversal stuff, I was like, all right, who's selling BS supplements again? This is nonsense. But there are a lot of very smart people talking about age reversal. And then I started looking at the literature. And I was like, oh my God, they've already had successful experiments in various animal models. They have entire cell lines, which they age reversed skin cells and talk about, <laughs> talk about investing in the beauty industry, skin cell lines that have been age reversed successfully to look and act and feel like completely younger versions of that same skin. And there are whole animals, rodents specifically, that have been successfully age reversed in part. They've done some stuff with like a mouse eye, I think, or a rat eye, and they just forward aged it because they know how to go make, make aging faster by, again, flipping the switches on the, the genes and the molecules that they're like, because if you just uncouple these systems, you age real quick. Like forget about the 80 or two or three years for a rat. We're talking about like several weeks, the thing just goes, and they get crazy glaucoma and they can't see anything. And then they just switch them back and have the eye completely rejuvenated in I think days or weeks. And then they could see as well as ever as when they were super, super young. And I think they've done whole animal tests in general where you can do this on a whole animal. That's tougher because if you reverse age the brain too much, you get like pluripotent 
neural stem cells, and then you reverse out all of your memories and drives, and you're like a baby again. Not in appearance, you're still adult size, but you've got the mind of a child. That's no good. So age reversal still has a long ways to go in order to get us real human results. Maybe for some subsystems it'll come in early, but overall reverse aging, if you're curious about the trajectory of this, go look up uh, some stuff uh, more recent work of David Sinclair and his lab and other people around him that are communicating around the world and this uh, aging research is really, really taking off. Um, get at that stuff. There's YouTube videos of him to get a glimpse at what's really happening. It's pretty intense. And it's in its early stages, but not in its early hypothetical stages. In its early stages of generating candidate molecules successfully to now, in multiple studies, gain traction on reversing aging in various ways. This is a thing that seems to be entirely possible to do. Now, the era of AI-assisted genomic and pharmaceutical breakthroughs, which I'll have another video about, is likely going to be an early swing by something like the 2030s. Now, that's not if AGI kills us all or if we ascend into machines, then, you know, what's the point of all that? But... It is on track to be really in full swing in the early 2030s. And I'll have another video about what I think about all that. But for now, let's just assume that in 10 years, so 2033 or something, it's 2023 recording, that aging reversal therapy is a real thing. And I'll ask a few questions here and just try to speculate along with you guys about, come speculate with me, won't you? That's my, hey, Scott, who's the, come be my neighbor. Who's that guy? What's his name? Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. So instead of come, won't you be my neighbor? I was like, won't, won't you come BS with me and fantasize aimlessly? Let's talk about how it's going to affect industry and society potentially. And again, I said I would say this again, and here I am saying it. The major caveat here is these are not predictions. They're kind of speculative, speculative fantasy thing, just to get your brains going a little bit, because the trajectory of society in many other ways could be so radically different by then that this would be typically, it would be uh, tantamount to like, gee, it would be tantamount to seeing a commercial or like, oh, the world's most advanced oven and it can heat foods in 30 minutes flat. And you're like, eh, all right, well, they clearly didn't see the microwave coming. So this is insanely outdated. And there's kind of no analog to how that could be. It's like, man, in the future, you know, like <laughs> the department store will get a revamp. Like there's not going to be department stores in the future because Amazon and Walmart, it's kind of one of those things. So it could, I could be totally off, but I think we might get at least some glimpses of this because even if many of us end up ascending with AI into the digital sphere through brain-machine interface and, and uh, copying of the brain onto computer, even if that happens, some of us will still want to hang around and be human, however limited that may be. And then maybe there's going to be a market for people who want to never age. Uh, curious, very big market indeed, potentially. So let's find out how this may affect some things. First up, the beauty industry. Now, it's all upsides and downsides for these industries. So the downside here is that a lot of people put on makeup and buy makeup and support the beauty industry because they're aging and they're trying to hide the aging effects, which makes sense. However, the upside is that aging reversal, imagine a bunch of people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. After two months of age reversal therapy, are from then and in perpetuity, maybe getting a, an update therapy every five years as they age another five years and they get regressed back another five, functionally appearing to be having the energy levels of and the mental sharpness and quickness of 22-year-olds. Okay. There are a lot of people in their 40s, 50s, 60s that don't even try to look their best and put on makeup and engage with the beauty industry because they're like, what the hell's the point? I have two kids in college. We got a husband that loves me and like he's done being attracted to things anyway because, you know what I'm saying? Bedroom's been a cold place. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. 
I'm not going to go out there and, and, and be a thought. I'm not. And it's just ain't me. I lived that life. It was fun. The 70s were great, but nah, I'm, I'm done, which is totally cool. Now this person is presenting as a 22-year-old. There is a ton of beauty product that a 22-year-old will buy in order to optimize that look that an older person just would never buy. So there will be changes on the kind of products offered. There will probably be fewer rejuvenation products like wrinkle prevention cream because who gives a shit? You're 22 and just every five years regress back to 22 anyway. But also more enhancement products like, you know, 45-year-old women that have two kids at home might not buy blue eyeliner often to go to the club with and do the Jersey Shore thing. But if they're 22 years old biologically again, her and hubby, when they have their Friday date night, they might get into some ratchet shit. And that might mean different kind of makeup. So the beauty industry, I think, is very safe and enhanced. I think there's probably overall big gains because when they have almost everyone is a young person again, being young, one of the best advantages of it is being beautiful, uh, as most people think, and uh, might as well enhance that beauty even more uh, because, gee whiz, you know, now you're really in the playing field again of, of looking your best, might as well do your best. Second thing, what will this do to social media and the influencer world? Well, I think there's a lot of people that because they're older, and I've, I've heard this happen to folks, they don't like how they look because they're older and their older pictures look better than their new pictures and they hate that. And they just kind of disengage uh, or reduce their engagement with social media. I think age reversal can bring a lot of those people back into the mix. So it's likely to increase social media participation as far as I can tell. Healthcare. This is a huge one. People will need overall way less healthcare of a certain type. And that type is the disease treating kind of healthcare because aging is the worst disease amplifier ever. You can't cigarette smoke or eat 10 trillion calories a day your way into the shit that your body's going to see when you just get old enough. So if aging reversal is successful for at least a large fraction of the population, you're going to have a lot of diseases that people just don't really run into much anymore. For example, diseases like Alzheimer's, like that really is an aging disease. If you don't age much anymore, you can age reverse every now and again. It's just a whole lot of stuff that you're just not getting into. However, this industry, the healthcare industry, I don't think will shrink. Maybe it'll shrink a little. Maybe it'll grow. It'll just, it'll for sure change though. And maybe the changes are net, net, I would say my best guess is neutral, but probably even grow because people always want more health. For example, hospital care will probably decline in how much it does disease management care. The fraction of people on dialysis is going to drop an, an unbelievable amount, but now increase how much of its services are things like emergency care and procedures-based care. Because you might still have like, you got hit by a softball wrong and your kidney blew up and you need that thing fixed or some shit like that. Um, or, you know, like some other kind of emergencies. Like, I'll say this, uh, say this again in a little bit, but when you realize you can be quote unquote young forever or for a long time, you might be like, holy crap, like I've been young before. I'm not taking this shit for granted. I... Uh, I'm going to take really, really good care of myself, and that means I'm going to be really good about preventative care, I'm going to really be good about getting all sorts of medical procedures that enhance my health, and all this other stuff. Subsection of healthcare is the pharmaceutical industry. It is going to see a distinct reduction in sales and development of drugs that fight aging-mediated diseases, which is a lot of drugs. But it's going to be a massive upswing in sales of drugs that do a few things. First, fight aging neutral diseases like genetic disorders. You have Huntington's disease, well, that is age related, but comes really fast. If you have whatever, like um, whatever kind of genetic disease you can have, that's going to be with you your whole life. And if the pharmaceutical industry cures that, then you don't have it at 22, you don't have it at 42, even though you're like a 22 year old, you just don't have it. So it's still on the priority list. 
the pharmaceutical industry is going to try to make drugs that heal you faster after disease or surgery. For example, scar removal, huge deal. A lot of people who get plastic surgery and other body composition altering procedures, they have scars. And if you can get a reliable procedure or drug that gets rid of scars, anti-age reversal may have a big thing, sort of localized to do with that, that's a big deal. Blemish removal, cosmetic surgery, folks. A lot of people don't get cosmetic surgery simply because they're like too old to care about how they look. If everyone is in their early 20s again, quote unquote forever, a lot of people might start to do enhancement surgery that would have never done it. Because like big fake titties on a 57 year old is kind of like dope if you lived that life back when you were younger. But if you are 57 and you get big fake titties, it's all first of all, ladies, that's sweet. You do you, that's awesome. Bless, God bless you. But a lot of people who are 57, they just won't do anything like that because they're like, well, whatever, what do I need titties for nowadays? But if you're 57, but you present as a 22-year-old, and you're like, I always wanted big fakies, man. I wanted that attention. Give me the fakes. So cosmetic surgery, very likely to be, to be something that we see much more of. Disease prevention efforts, huge. Vaccines, you still need them when you're young, still need them when you're old. So that industry is going nowhere. And pharmaceutical enhancement industry might really, really start to take off at this point if it's not taken off already. Memory boosters, focus drugs, psychiatric drugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Drugs that can keep you leaner, drugs that can reduce your appetite, drugs that can build muscle for you without you doing anything. And of course, genomic, uh, genetic enhancements, genetic engineering to make you do all those things as well. Because like now that you're young, uh, it just guarantees young. It does not guarantee good looking. Some of us, mm -hmm. this guy, when we were younger, we're not that good looking and had weird body fat everywhere or whatever, or too skinny or too fat or too whatever, like you don't want to look like. Then there's all kinds of stuff where like, you're like, all right, I have a second shot in my 20s. I am not going to be fat through my 20s. Not this time. Give me the drugs. Give me the genetic engineering. Get me out into another body that I can have a super, super fun time in because my 20s and IRL were not that cool. Lots of that going to be going around. Number four, the elderly care industry will shrink down massively. I had to put this in there as an industry that for sure gets crushed and like, yeah, that's going to be a thing, right? Uh, not the industry to work in if aging reversal comes in into full effect, or at least not for a while. The fitness industry, here's a trippy one. The weight loss industry by itself may decline because people gain weight in an age-related way and typically want to lose weight when they're older. But muscle building and uh, body sculpting, people who just want to look chiseled and toned, the industry that I'm in currently, and what, what I'd call hobby-based fitness, rock climbing, mountain biking, kayaking, pickup games, um, you know, all sorts of clubs and sports and dance teams and stuff, that stuff will explode in popularity, potentially. And uh, newly de-aged people, especially regular, remember, we're still having kids, right? So there's still regular young people entering into this foray. Can you imagine, like, you turn 22 years old in 2034, and you take your first de-age medicine, and you just, you will never know what it's like to age, that's a trip. That is is very possibly coming in the future. Those folks uh, may just be like regular young people for a while and sort of live it up and not care. But I think a lot of people who have seen the ravages of age and then got reversed age, if you reverse them into age 22, they're going to be like, yo, I'm working out. I'm getting shredded and fit. I'm going to do it right because I don't take this stuff for granted anymore. I'm going to make my best of my 20s again. That's a big deal. How many 50 plus year olds, 40, 50, 60 plus year olds are there that want the body of their dreams? And when you give them youth to set the fertile ground, because like, remember, youth doesn't necessarily give you the body of your dreams. Like if you had the, if you in your youth, in your twenties looked like Harry Potter, when they age reverse you from age 55 back to 22, you're going to look like Harry Potter. And you might be like, I want to look more Jack than Harry Potter. So I'm going to lift weights and I'm going to take supplements and I'm going to take pharmaceuticals and I'm going to get into super crazy amounts of physical activity and I'm going to work on my diet and all this other stuff. So there is a way in which the sort of fitness industry can have kind of a renaissance. Renaissance periodization maybe even, huh, Scott the video guy? Yes, yes. 
I've heard of that company. You're an interesting, an interesting brand. Number six, the tourism industry. I think their younger people or everyone being younger is going to have a huge upswing in travel relative to older people for a couple of reasons. Younger people have higher energy levels. Like I know for a fact that older folks I interact with, a lot of times they don't travel even when they sort of want to because they're like, oh, we just don't have the, just don't have the oomph for that much flying and that much walking around and the clubbing and all this stuff. I'm like, oh, I hear that. Um, there is a resistance to travel fatigue that younger people have. And also younger people tend to have more of a desire to explore exotic places. And I think that's probably going to boost the tourism and travel industry. And here's the thing. When the aging, the anti-aging revolution hits, if it does, uh, it's going to spread worldwide. Uh, every revolution now spreads worldwide, which is sweet. But there's going to be this whole world of now also young people young people. Uh, and it's going to be super exciting to meet a lot of young people uh, like yourself everywhere. And I'll tell you what, if you're going to invest in any business, if you know the anti-aging revolution is for sure coming in a couple of years, you're like, yeah, it's coming. Everyone, the announcements been made, like these drugs are real, celebrities are de-aging. Uh, invest in hostels. Hostels. So younger people are going to start traveling around, staying in hostels, and doing things people do in hostels. Scott, the video guy, what do people do in hostels? Get assaulted. Good God. This, this guy's seen Touristas a few too many times. I've seen the movies too. It's disturbing. Pay for a hotel. Pay for a hotel. Make some money. All right. Be an adult. Be an adult. That's right. You are an adult. Right? So, number seven, nightlife and dating. Here's a super interesting one. The change in the entertainment industry, not entertainment so much, the nightlife and dating industries is going to be nothing short of transformative. To put it another way is to ask the question of how many 45-year-old post having their children are already moms with 22-year-old bodies does it take to cause a bar culture revolution? Don't worry, we'll have even more than that. Fields, as far as the eye can see, of people who want to party like they're in their 20s because now they're in their 20s again. Wild stuff. And here's an interesting wrinkle. You won't really be able to tell age, chronological age, from looks anymore, and people will lie about it. So age verification is going to be able to maybe be more of a big deal. Like, you'll have a 22-year-old that'll be like, yeah, I man, hooked up with this girl last night. And be like, oh, yeah. Well, was she? Like, yeah, she was 24. She's like this fitness consultant or whatever. It's pretty dope, man. She was cool. Like, oh, yeah, let's look her up on social media. And you're like, oh, she's 58. Well, all good for me. No wonder she really knew her way around the bedroom. Stuff like that. The post-divorce dating market. Right now, if you've been through a divorce, especially if you're older, Look, you're looking at other people who have been through marriages or people that have been single. Everyone's older. It's a different game. Everyone's older, but everyone looks super young. Oh, my God. The post-divorce dating market is unreal, unrecognizable. Here's a sort of downside. Well, definitely downside. Uh, there, we should expect an immense surge of sexually transmitted diseases like you've never, ever, ever seen. And hopefully countered preemptively by pharma. You'd be like, hey, you got age reversal? Like, yep, here I am. Like, all right, take all these pills before you go out. Like, why? Like, you know why. Maybe you don't remember, but things happen out there. And condoms are always so hard to find, aren't they? Isn't that right, Scott, the video guy? I've never found one. <laughs> Where's Waldo book of condoms? It's just never gotten past page one. Condom blind, actually. <laughs> it's this really nasty medical condition. Like, where are the condoms at? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't find them. I always pack them in my night bag, but never, they just never materialize. It's a black hole for condoms in that thing. So that's going to be a thing that <laughs> maybe happens. There are also, I think, going to be a lot of people involved in the following scene for a bit. People in the clubbing slash fitness scene, kind of a little mini Jersey Shore all over the world. People who are working at their jobs and training to look amazing during the week, grind during the week, and then enjoying their new young bodies, their super fit young bodies with the, the money 
that they have from being super productive with other young, attractive folks on the weekends. This gives also a huge double boost to the beauty industry because now they're younger and they're getting in there and they really want to care about how they look. So it's a huge thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is like there may be no party like partying in 2035. That may just be unreal. Like you get in, you're like, where do all these young people come from? Where are all the old people? Like, you know, really have old people anymore, man. There's a couple here and there that just chose not to take the therapy, but this is us. This is humanity. Like, holy crap. It could, could be a lot of fun. Could be really intense. The fashion industry is probably going to experience an immense, immense positive impact. There's going to be a massive increase of young, attractive people trying to look even more attractive who just want to look their best. And here's the kicker. Many of these, the ones that were age-reversed, are actually old, chronologically, highly skilled, rich as hell by normal young people standards. Like, imagine if your parents were in your body and they were back in college, but they had their bank account. If you're like, oh my God, there's nothing you can't buy realistically clothing-wise. And so there is going to be a lot of money for folks to make here in the fashion industry. I think it's probably going to be offering a mix of on-demand 3D printed outfits that you can buy off people on social media. Like you're scrolling on social media and whether it's an AI rendered person or a real person, you're like, oh my God, that's a cute outfit. You hit buy, your Amazon cart fills up, $1.99. You hit confirm, you scroll over, you just take your phone or whatever. Hopefully it's by then the glasses thing. So you're in VR space and you're like, Okay, turn on 3D printer and render. And your 3D printer at home, bzz, 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 exactly to your size, which automatically links with your profile when you buy things, gives you exactly that outfit for exactly your body. And some creator who either ran an AI system that created outfits and they sort of cherry picked which ones they like, or they just uh, are, are very a human creator who is very artistic and they design these clothing or this clothing, they put it up in their marketplace. So every time someone 3D prints their clothes that they like, they make a dollar. And then Amazon makes 50 cents and then it's 50 cents to run the printer or something like that. That could very well be a thing. And, uh, you know, there almost certainly will still be luxury clothing brands that are made the old fashioned way. If not by hand, then by sewing machine, somewhere in a factory in Italy and someone to be like, oh my God, where'd you get that outfit? Like, can I, can I link it? And they're like, they're looking with their AR goggles at you to try to get it to register. Like what? It won't pull up. Be like, oh, well, if you can't 3D print this, honey, this is real. It's from Milan. And like, oh my God, how much was it? Like, you don't want to know. I had to kill my husband for it. It was worth it, honey. <laughs> Elongated cigarette. <sighs> Scott, the video guy, if you were at a club, let's call it bar, some seedy place where you go, and let's call you single for the purpose of this story, and there's a woman looking into your direction with dark but enchanting eyes, and she has one of those elongated 1920s lady cigarettes. Are you in or are you in? You're the man. I'm glad you're living your life. This is great. So in any case, the fashion industry in general is probably a sure bet, but this will make it just blow up like crazy because now it's like tons and tons of people really care about fashion. Education, what happens there? Younger brains just learn better. They do. And the people that are age reversed are going to have an insane mix of high fluid intelligence, which peaks in your 20s, and high crystallized intelligence, which peaks in your 70s. It's going to be like nothing anyone's ever seen. And a lot of people are going to want to have multiple careers potentially. And so there's going to be a huge avenue for courses, probably AI delivered for the most part, but maybe some human delivered ones where it's a certification course to get you up to speed on a new industry or a new subsection or something like that. Maybe the need for traditional college will decline substantially, or there's certainly going to be a college tourism thing where, guys, I swear to God, and this sounds totally insane, there are rich-ass 63-year-olds that loved their college experience, and they just want to go back to college. Not physically go to school, which is also they liked. College with a capital C. The guys, the girls, the frat parties, the jello shots, jello wrestling, 
jello. A lot of jello in college, huh, Scott? <laughs> jello me up. There may be people who, once they age reverse, just go to college just to have the college experience. Can you imagine, like, you're actually 22 years old, or 22, going to got 18, and it's your first year at the dorms, and your roommate, and you're like, my name's Mike. What's your name? He's like, Frank. I'm like, all right, Frank, how are you doing, man? Like, yeah, pretty good. What's your major? He's like, ah, astronautical engineering or whatever, astronomical biomedical physics. And you're like, yeah, you're pretty smart. Like, yeah, I had a successful startup, met it out at 20 million, but just having a time, man. Like, I'm sorry, what? How old are you? Like, oh, uh, 18, 57. Like, you're my roommate? Like, uh-huh. All right. Are you down to party? You're like, yeah, where the hell do you think I'm in college? P.S. I'm above the drinking age. Let's get it started. Ooh, there's all sorts of weird concerns there. In any case, interesting what happens with regular brick and mortar college, but definitely going to be a demand for the ability to do some new creative skills because people will be just much sharper and able to pick them up. Adult education, huge explosion. Lastly, on the upsides, for the most part, we'll have a little talk about downsides in a sec, productivity in all industries. Younger people have a, a few dependable things on average, more energy, more creativity, more ability to learn new things, and a higher fluid intelligence, which means they're quicker in the moment with their thoughts. Those who have de-aged and now have all of these things of youth will also have all of that plus a crap load of skills, crap loads of patience and wisdom developed through years of being a human person, and crap loads of crystallized intelligence. Like, that's nuts. That combination can increase productivity like crazy. And pretty much all industries that are still relevant are going to get a boost just because the people in them are just more productive. If there's a point you get uh, very likely in your 60s when like there is some real hard cognitive work you could do, and there's a, you can take the flight to Tokyo to talk to the brand managers and really work that deal out. But you're like, you know what, man? I'm just going to go let somebody else do that. I do have the best expertise at the company for it, but man, like, I'm getting ready to shut it down here. I'm just running run the company more conservatively and, and, and let it make good money. It's already making good money. I don't want to rock the boat. I'm too old for that shit. That just goes out the window. And you're like, yeah, you're 65, but you're 22. And you're sharp as a tack and excited and energetic. And you're like, hell yeah, I'm going to Tokyo to close that deal. Let's make this money. Because I'm going to be around for a while longer. I need more money. That's definitely a thing. All right. Continuing on. Briefly. Downsides. Let's talk about a few of them. Will crime go up? Younger people are way more criminally prone than older people. The number one predictive association with crime is gender or sex, whatever we're calling it nowadays. Females almost don't commit crime by male standards. Number two is age. Okay, Any other demographic variables are just like almost completely irrelevant compared to those. If you de-age someone, are they going to get that fire back? Or will the wisdom of all of their years prevent them from being more criminal? I don't know the answer to that question. I would love for you guys to speculate in the comments. Will many people who are de-aged work less and party way too much? Like, bro, I'm 45. I'm going to work. I'm 22 the next day or after two months of aging therapy reversing me. I don't know what the fuck. What the hell is work, bro? I'm not trying to do that shit. I'm trying to go party every single day. Maybe. Maybe. Will people do more stupid risk-taking? You know, like videos of young people doing dumb shit is like universal. I believe that's called TikTok. And as you get older, you get a bit of wisdom and you stop doing dumb shit. But maybe some of that is just because when you're young, you got that oomph of energy. So when we age reverse you, some of that dumb shit might come back. But it might not because you're wise. and you, An age reverse 22-year-old who used to be 42 and now is 22, a very different person than a 22-year-old who just grew into it. So there is some of these negatives may not happen at all. Here's another question. Will people have more kids or fewer kids? First of all, 
if we age reverse you, does your fertility age reverse? Maybe. I just don't know the answer to that question. And it may be like, eh, usually it doesn't, but we can make it age reverse. Secondly, if you have already had children and then you age reverse back after, you may be like, bro, I had my kids, man. That was, I love my children. All the people that have had children say this, not all, a bunch of them. I love my kids, but like, thank God they're grown. And then when they age reverse after the kids leave the house or when they're 15 and still living at home, mom comes back at 22, no more kids. So it might be just be like no change. But some people, no doubt, when age reversed and if able to have children, maybe they never had them, maybe they wanted more children, they're going to have kids again. Big deal. Another thing is when people grow up in an age reversing society, when I'm 17 years old and I know that I'll never have to get older, quote unquote, than age 22, and I can be age 22 for, gee, at least 40 or 50 years and just everything's going to be great, people may push off having kids at all uh, for a long time, especially if fertility is something that can get age reversed. You could be like, bro, I'm not having kids when I'm in my 20s. I'm going to have them issues later because I got a lot, of, a lot of living to do. But on the other hand, some people may very well be like, wait a minute, I'm going to be in my 20s for 40 years? Your girl about to have all these kids. I'm going to have a kid every year, every year that I'm alive, new kid, or something like that. Some people just love kids and they love families and they'll have the opportunity to just continue to pump them out. So very dynamic. I don't want, maybe it's not a good idea to call this a downside, but the question mark is a downside in the sense that it's an uncertainty. What about people's financial time horizons? Uh, you'll be around for longer or like young and virile for longer. So maybe investing for the long term is a really good idea. Because, you know, like when you're in your 40s and now you're 22 again, you're like, okay, when I was 22 last time, I spent all of my money and had to eat ramen noodle soup at the end of the week. I was a moron. Not going to do that again. I'm going to continue to work, properly investing my money such that by the time I'm 42 again, which is to say still 22, I'll have 20 more years of investments and I'll be really loaded and huge safety net and then this is great. On the other hand, you can also say to yourself, look, I'm young now. I got a second chance at being young. I'm not going to work myself to the bone for the future. The future is now. This is the future. I'm 42. I've been saving and scrimping long enough. It's time to spend, spend, spend. So you may be, some people may become very derelict in their future planning. But then again, if you think through it longer, you'd be like, all right, what do I want to do? I want to travel a lot and I want to party my ass off. I had better construct my investments intelligently so that I can do that even more in the future. So again, I'm not clear on what happens here and probably different between different people. And the last question, I think, nope, not last, uh, almost last, will there be a YOLO attitude? Will that be on the rise? You know, like, uh, you only live once, bro, which I always say is... It's not indicative of anything. You only live once means do crazy shit because you only live once. Or you only live once means don't do crazy shit because you only live once. And that living will be much shorter or much worse off if you screw up. So is there going to be a more YOLO attitude that young people often have? YOLO in the traditional sense of like doing more crazy stuff. Or is there going to be a realization that the gift of being able to be young and sort of relative perpetuity is so great? I'm going to really take the long view and really care for myself my finances, the environment around me, take care of stewardship. Like there's probably plenty of people who are in the, let's say the, uh, in, in, in pro environment camp that are older that like, they're like, oh, like I, I'm exiting stage left here soon. Anyway, I, I really hope the earth does well, but uh, to me, it's all whatever. I'm 77 and I don't, I'm not long for this world. But if you're 22 again, you will be like, what a, I don't want to die of whatever environment, disgusting dirt we're going to accumulate on Earth. We're all here for a while in our best shape. Let's really make this good. It's kind of like if you're in an Airbnb for a night, you can like leave some garbage around because you're like, who cares? But if you go on a camping trip and you have a tent and you have to be there for a week, like you're not going to throw away wrappers into your tent because you're like, well, we're here for a while. Let's take care of it. So it could be that effect. Not entirely certain. Here's some more doozies. Will people with outdated beliefs persist in the voting block and slow down transformation and change? Like, this is politically incorrect to say, but a lot of the transformation that happens politically is older people with progressive, weird, hateful, terrible views just die 
And then they don't vote anymore. And then the younger people are the only people around, and now they're older, and now they have those views. If aging reversal is a thing, and that really curtails the amount of death due to aging that we have, gee, man, we might still have people around with really weird attitudes and, and w- whatever way they can and are keeping things more politically conservative, not in the sense of right wing, in the sense of conserving what has always been. Or will there be some plus sides to it that now people are experienced voters and no longer vote on short time horizons. They vote on longer time horizons because they know they're going to be around for longer and they fall for less political bullshit. Nowadays, according to the polling, younger people like uh, college age folks have like one of the most favorable views of socialism that has uh, been in the United States since a long time ago. And I always think, you know, if those people had just lived through the Cold War, especially the end of the Cold War, and seen really the fruits of socialism, communism, which I will say for the second time unrelated on this channel, is the same thing. Get at me in the comments. I'll probably make a video about that at some point, but I feel like so many people have beat that to death. Uh, If those folks had just lived through that era, there would be a tiny fraction of them that would be like, hey, like socialism. They'd be like, what? That didn't? So you didn't try that? Cambodia and China and Vietnam and Cuba and Venezuela, didn't they all fail? Wow. Let's try again. Uh, I don't know about that. But new people, they read about socialism. It always sounds nice. It does. Uh, They go, oh my God, this is great. And they don't have that historical perspective. And also like more or less with the socialism thing, but like politicians plan and promise all sorts of crap. And if you've been long enough, uh, if you've been around long enough, you're not green to that shit anymore. And a politician says, I'm going to know, no, I'm going to transform. But, uh, you know, hey, 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 watch this. I, uh, I I crapped on leftists for socialism. I'll crap on the right wing here. Here we go. Uh, time to make more enemies. Eh? Um, you know, when people say, uh, make America great again, uh, Donald Trump wasn't even the first president to do that. I believe Ronald Reagan used it before, and I don't know who else used it before that. And the thing is, America is greater in almost every measurable respect, uh, even since Trump, and definitely since Reagan and for sure since before. So the idea that we're going to make something great again is very close to bordering on insanity. Like we have to make America better than ever because it's already the best it's ever been. There is no past in which America was greater in some senses for sure. And maybe that's what they're hearkening to. But overall, it's not even close. So when you get you know, people that haven't been around a long time or people whose memory is kind of hewed by various things. They could be like, oh, yeah, great again. That sounds great. But if you have young, very mentally active people that have been around a while and they say, let's make America great again, I'd be like, great again? Like, when? What are you talking about? Things are great now. Let's make them better. But the great again thing may not work anymore. Or it'll work better because you'll have all these old geezers around that looking like young people like, yeah, back in the day it was great. I don't know. Maybe. And... Is overpopulation going to be a problem? Because a lot of people say, like, age reversal is a bad idea because here's what happens. You age reverse all these people. People don't die of old age anymore. Who knows how long they'll live, maybe 80 years, and they just croak of just switch off somehow. Or maybe they live to 120 and aging doesn't start until then. Or maybe we just keep kicking the can down the road and we just have people that never die. Like, first of all, immortality is a pretty baller accomplishment of a society. So anyone arguing against that needs a little bit of a check. But they're right in being concerned, theoretically at least, uh, sorry, I said that wrong, hypothetically, that well, what about overpopulation? We have people breeding and no one ever dies. At some point, like rats on a ship, just all rats, right? Overpopulation is not a problem. It will not be a problem. It was never a problem. Overpopulation fears are, were, are, and almost certainly will be in the future entirely mythical, and that will absolutely be a video. It's already in my to-do list. So, out of concern. Now, all right, fantasy world, Mike, thanks for that Trieste on nothing, pretend. We're here now, and age reversal is not really a thing, except for in some animal models. How are we going to, what's the like trajectory from now here until the fantasy magic world of everyone's 22 and there's condomless debauchery everywhere? I think the first thing that'll happen is that Biomedical advances in animal models are going to speed up like crazy. They're going to be boosted by AI-assisted drug and genomic discovery. And I think it's highly likely that this will occur in the late 2020s, 2027, 2028. 
there's going to be some really, really unbelievable stuff happening in animal models, right? Like animals that don't age anymore, animals that have age reversed and age forward, age reversed as many times as you want. They've done brain scans, memory scans, and they're like, yep, same animals, they just don't age. So this works in rats and pigs and monkeys and does anyone human want to try this? Could could get to a thing like that. Now, regulation and needless FDA type of stuff where every drug needs five trillion years to be approved while people die everywhere from not having the drug, that still very likely will get in the way of speed. But age reversal has a real big deal going for it. The people that are in political power, the very elite, if you want to, at least, maybe not elite in the sense of like, man, the elites control everything, but in the sense of like, um, you know, people who are the representatives of the rest of us, they're Almost all of them in academia and in politics are older, very old usually. And they pretty much all want reverse aging to happen as soon as possible, as soon as there's something tractable in the research, which is like, this can be a thing? This can be a thing I can take? Do you think Senator or Congressman wants to just croak at age 82? Or do you think when he sees age reversal as a reality in, in, his, in his mid-60s, he's going to be like, I want that? Which subcommittee is regulating that? Walks over to Bob's office. Bob, you regula regulating anti-aging? He's like, yeah, we got a meeting about it tomorrow. You better let that shit go through or I swear to God, I'm not dying on your watch. Just kidding, buddy. See you later. All right, thanks, Frank. Walks off. Th older people run the world in a very real sense. And when th their mortality is presented as optional, where they can have their youth again, they are the last people in the world to get in the way. I think that's a huge incentive, which is also why I'm pretty optimistic about age reversal if it is theoretically tractable, if it is practically engineerable into humans, which looks like it probably is, maybe. It's going to happen. It might have a little bit of a delay, but as soon as the research really picks up, and nobody really cares. Like the research, nobody's regulating anti-aging research in a crazy way. Like nobody comes and says, oh, you're keeping these rats alive for two years longer. That's it. You're going to jail. That doesn't happen. When enough of these human experiments get going, all of a sudden, pharmaceutical companies get involved, huge funding, they're lobbying themselves. It's going to be a lot to go up against. And of course, even in voting, there could be a situation where the voters don't want age reversal because we have a lot of young voters. But even that's not true because demographically, almost every country is getting older. So the voting block for people who are going to be really resistant to uh, preventing anti-aging research from occurring or preventing drugs from hitting the market, th any voting block against that is up against this enormous voting block of tons of 40, 50, 60 year olds that are like, I'm sorry, what? You want to prevent what? You don't want me to get younger? You better get out of my way here. There's a revolution coming. So I really think that by the late 2020s, there may be some serious traction on this. The second thing that'll happen, probably, as it normally does, is there will be human trials for stopping aging and human trials, human trials for de-aging, for reverse aging. And that's going to be built upon the best, really impressive animal results. And then those trials, the media is going to start to cover them, slash human beings will start to observe, like, dude, my husband's in one of those trials. Every week he looks younger, and I just don't understand what's going on. It's crazy. They're going to tell their friends, reporters are going to get involved, and then USA Today is going to be like, is age reversing really a thing that's happening now? Crazy, crazy stuff. The next thing that's going to happen is rich-ass older people are going to begin using the first drugs that come out, which will probably be more expensive and limited access. Some of your favorite Hollywood celebrities might start to look younger and younger and younger Every, you know, the one movie they were playing a 55-year-old, the next movie they're playing a 27-year-old. And you're like, that is Shawas' name? Holy crap, what the hell is going on? The incentive for someone like Beyonce, for example, to get her hands on anti-aging therapy, age reversal therapy, is like, I don't know, everything? This is the biggest thing in the world. How much... Would Beyonce, of her own private wealth, pay for a drug like this? The answer is like an infinity. And at first, only the rich and famous will have access, as they do with everything. Fourth, prices will start to decline and more people will be able to afford de-aging therapies. 
which may be a service you get every five years. You go back five years, every five years, you go back five years. And then fifth and sort of lastly, you have this hugely competitive marketplace, multiple pharmaceutical companies making various uh, medicines that reverse age you, therapies. And this leads to exponential declines in price, exponential increases in quality of outcome and availability. And then all the stuff that I predicted earlier in this uh, video are, is going to start to come uh, into fruition when mass and mass and masses of people begin age reversing. And then at some point, we'll have age reversed everyone that can be age reversed. And then the rest of the people, just as they reach their 20s and 30s, will just be like, oh, I guess it's time for me to start age reversing. Just like, you know, nowadays it's time to get your colon, you, you know, cancer screening when you're 40 or whatever. Same thing with age reversal. It's just going to be a thing you do. And aging may no longer be a thing that people go through. Which of all of the accomplishments of modern society and all of the progress we've seen, uh, anyone who takes that for granted, I'm coming after you personally <laughs> if I'm still around. Unbelievable if it ever happens. So let's say you think it might happen. Let's say you assess the probability of it happening as more likely than not. How can you prepare for this yourself? First, you got to take care of yourself because the shit's not around yet. Stay leaner, stay more active, stay healthier so you can be around to benefit from these therapies when they come around. I think it's going to be a 10 years or less sort of thing. Maybe I'm being optimistic, but with the rise of artificial intelligence and how that's going to boost biological research, likely, I don't think that's so optimistic. I think it's actually realistic. Second, support the effort to push age reversal therapy with at least your tacit approval in private and public convos. So if you see someone saying, well, I don't think it's a good idea, ask them why. Do some arguing to convince. Because if more of us agree that aging reversal is a great thing, it'll just get here sooner and with fewer road bumps. Number three, look into getting a biomedical degree if you're younger and you're listening to this and go work in the field. This stuff's not going to happen automatically. We need young, talented people who are passionate to go run these research labs and do these experiments and test the serum on themselves. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Maybe, though, you could become the Hulk. Who knows? Kind of a sure bet. Like if you are a young person right now, maybe you're 19 years old, you've done a year or two of college and you just don't know where you want to put your, where you want to put your educational marbles, so to speak. I mean, like anti-aging medicine, age reversal medicine is, oh, man, that's, that's the field to be in because the incentive to make that field successful is wild. It's like if it was the year 2015. And you were like a computer person and you were like trying to get a degree and you asked, hey, should I go into like this AI neural network stuff? I'd be like, yes, Jesus Christ, yes, 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 that's where we will get you a job at OpenAI and your life is set, that sort of situation, potentially. Number four, try to, if it appears on the ballot, vote against restrictions of this kind of technology and against medical innovation restrictions generally. I think one of the worst things you can do is politically position yourself to make medical innovation more difficult because you are actively interfering with things getting better. Why would you do that? I'm sure you have quote unquote good reasons, but I assure you they're not. I'll try to convince you over many videos if that's the case. Number five, this is a big one. Do not try not to get skeeved out when only rich people and celebrities have access first. Don't go on Instagram. Don't go say, well, this is really a matter. What happened to social justice? How come it's the rich and famous getting this? Rich and famous people and celebrities do the insanely difficult work, quote unquote, of working out the kinks of all these new products at a premium ass price that you don't want to pay. And it's free for you. I want Beyonce to be a lab rat for generation one of age reversal therapy. It might not work that great. It might have some weird side effects. She'll be okay in the end. In any case, she'll have what she wanted. By the time it gets to me a couple months or a couple years later, they're going to work the kinks out. Guys, back in the early 90s, exclusively rich people had cell phones. Nobody bitched about it. There was no social justice revolution back then demanding that everyone gets a cell phone. Thank God. They worked the kinks out, and now cell phones are unbelievable, and rich people never had access to this. And nowadays, how rich you are and what kind of phone you have just straight up don't correlate. Like, anyone can get an iPhone. I've seen everyone with an iPhone. So it's one of the situations where it's totally cool 
to let rich people do their thing and getting technologies and medicines first, what they do is they really test the waters and they build up the company, can recoup some of the value they put into R&D. And then once they do that, other companies get competitive. This company wants a bigger market. And then they start to prices go down, go down, go down. Availability and quality goes up, goes up, goes up. And then that's great as long as we're also supporting a low barrier to entry for competitors and for other therapy creators, uh, then the stuff is going to get into your price range sooner and all good things are going to happen. Now, lastly, in sort of a philosophical tone, if you are a nihilist and you struggle to have meaning and purpose in your daily life, of what is it that I'm here for? Maybe you can make a part of your purpose to end and reverse aging. Because, oh my God, isn't that amazing? Is there anyone out there that thinks aging is a good thing? That aging is super cool? I remember I saw a podcast, I forgot who it was, that said this. I should be giving credit. Folks, please, in the comments, let me know who said this. But um, maybe it was Aubrey de Grey or one of those folks. Uh, they took issue with the term with the phrase aging gracefully. He said, there's no such thing as aging gracefully. Aging is the opposite of grace. And to a large extent, that's kind of true. Isn't that something to live and work for potentially, that you could be a part of a society and maybe an important part or maybe a small part in helping usher in this era of age reversal? Wouldn't that be unbelievable? Wouldn't you feel that that meant something? Maybe, maybe. Look at how amazing your life is today in every objective, measurable way compared to what it would have been like if you lived in 1880. Because of the exponential rise in technology and progress that we are currently now being witness to at a faster and faster pace, the year 2035 may be as good compared to the year 2023 as 2023 was compared to the year 1880 or 1920 or 1950 or something. I want that. That sounds great. And maybe you think it sounds great too. And maybe that's something that you can orient yourself around to give yourself purpose that maybe you feel like is not around in your life currently. Now, if the anti-aging surge comes early in the genomic slash biomedical revolution, if it's one of the first things that comes with genetic engineering, et cetera, it might make people way more cool with the potential for enhancement from genetic engineering. Potential such as IQ boosting with genetic engineering making you smarter, appearance enhancing, psychological trait alteration like genetic fix to make you calmer or happier or uh, anything else. And all of those things are hopefully in, in the pipeline at some point, and I'll be making videos about them, hopefully before they happen, so that I can look prophetic in 10 years and be like, man, Mike got a lot of things wrong, but he sure got a lot of things right because, gee, he was so smart. Eh. Anyway, see you guys next time.